Today we are reading from the Gospel of Mark, and we are no stranger to Mark. We have been here a couple of weeks. We are still in chapter one, so we are cruising. We're moving rather slow. So it gives us time to linger and kind of be in the presence of the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Today we are reading verses 29 through 34. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. Today we begin a series called The Power of Love. It's quick, it's two parts. So it's today and it's next Sunday. And today part one is talking about using our power, using our power to do good. I try to space out how much TV I watch, but my latest series on Netflix is Black Lightning. In it, the main character, Jefferson Pierce, is a meta-human. To cut to the chase, a metahuman is a human with superhuman abilities. As the name would suggest, black lightning has electrical powers. Now in series three, the story has evolved to include more metahumans. Some are in cages and being tested, others are out on the street, and some are even in hiding. And to be sure, not all of their powers are being used to improve humankind. But Jefferson Pierce, a principal by day, uses his powers to help in his community, to help make his community a safer place. He is passionate about his kids and is always engaging them through relationship and empathy and restorative justice. He always feels like no kid is beyond reach. And so often when he sees his kids in the hallway or he's having a conversation, he'll ask them three questions in succession. Where is your future? The response is right here. Whose life is this? The response is mine. And finally, what are you gonna do with it? And the answer is live it by any means necessary. Jefferson Pierce uses his power to do good in a world that often has an overclass of cloudy skies. In the biblical text today and many others, it is clear that one of Jesus' superpowers is healing. Last Sunday and today, clearly Jesus helped those who had evasive spirits in them that were often more vociferous and louder than the actual person. Last year, in our own open breakfast, we did a retreat, and I witnessed a lady with such challenges. For sure, she was there and she was present, but the voices inside of her head were louder, and they were so loud, she began to talk back to them. Even I could not ignore the voices that were talking to her. I sensed she didn't care for the voices, but she couldn't deny their existence. Even when another patron told her to be quiet, she mustered as much energy as she could, and she tried to keep them quiet for a couple of minutes. It wasn't that she was not present. It was just that these voices, these entities in her, were stronger, and they overrode her sanity. Here in the text today, these voices are referred to as demons, as their community understood them. These entities, interestingly enough, recognized Jesus 
and it was not going to be their day as they were getting evicted. Jesus took the heaviness of mental health away from certain people, using his power to do good. Some time ago, I went to a workshop on schizophrenia, and as part of the workshop, we were given headphones and told to put them on. This tape was now being played in our ears nonstop, was more or less the talk that sometimes people with schizophrenia kind of like hear. While the tape was playing, the workshop instructor was still speaking to us and asking us to conduct business as usual. In that instance, my eyes were open. It was one thing to read about mental health. It was another thing to even meet someone with mental challenges such as schizophrenia. But the instructor on that day helped us to walk in the shoes of maybe even the characters Jesus encountered in his day. All those voices in my head at one time while the instructor was asking me to do something was quite challenging. Jesus took the voices away and their power over certain people in the community. He silenced them. He used his power to do good. So I got a question for you all. What are your superpowers? What are your superpowers? Now realize you cannot have a kid in the house and not get exposed to superheroes at some point. This past Christmas, we watched Wonder Woman, and we've watched Spider-Man a couple of episodes. But as I look at superheroes, they all have kind of like a common theme of enhanced strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, healing, and reflexes. One of the things I have observed with superheroes and people with visible powers is that the power to do good has to be cultivated. Power is like a drug, and it can lure us down the wrong path. Many of us think when we have it, we'll do better. And often when we've had power, we've not used it as well as we thought we would. In this show, Black Lightning, he has to remind his metahumans that there's one thing we're not going to do. We're not going to take a life. He has to remind them that there are some lines that you shouldn't cross, not ever, no matter what the situation is. And even when it seems like they come across someone who has done so much bad, way more bad than ever good, Jefferson Pierce, Black Lightning, reminds them that we're not crossing that line. Where is your future? Right here. Whose life is this? It's ours. He has to cultivate that. You have to cultivate goodness, and you have to cultivate love, and sometimes you have to cultivate power and your superpowers. I've been a little surprised about the carjackings happening in our city, being done by 14 and 15-year-olds. That surprised me, that kids, teenagers, are involved in assaulting and taking cars. But then I remember what I'm sharing with you, that you have to guide and cultivate people to do the right things. They have to be guided and supervised and redirected. I'm reminded even with virtual learning how many times I have to guide and redirect and cultivate a spirit of wanting to learn. But what a frightening experience this is for so many. In less than a month, over 200 carjackings have occurred. I wanted to know a little bit more about these young people that are taking cars. One little fellow in the news this week was arrested. Last week, I'm sorry. He already had a house monitor on him. He already had done several carjackings and got arrested for more. Here are people that are using their wit, their intelligence. They're using their superpowers to commit acts that are not good. You see, we have to cultivate our superpower. We have to cultivate our love. I believe that these young people are being driven by powers beyond them, even though they're driving people's cars away. 
They still need to be molded and shaped. They need their powers to be cultivated to do something good. They need to be reminded of virtual education and where they're supposed to be at 9 a.m. and at 1 p.m. after they come back from lunch. By the way, I was asking you all, what is your superpower? What is your superpower? Tomorrow is our annual church meeting, and we hope that many of you will join us there tomorrow, 7 p.m. We've sent out links. We will send out a link tomorrow, but we hope you'll join. I have had the privilege this year of working with the United Church of High Park Council, nine superheroes, all with powers. Our fearless, tireless moderator has the ability to see through walls and see through BS and see to the essence of things. Deb is no joke. She can spot trouble from afar. That's her superpower. And let's not forget Belle, the chair of our PPRC. She has a superpower to make you feel good. I'm convinced if I ever had to be fired, I would want Belle to fire me because she would fire you and you would feel good about getting fired because <laughs> she has a superpower. And let's not forget Mary Lynn and Maxine. They got steel powers. You ain't going nowhere. There is a steel door, and if they don't understand something, you are going to continue to explain it because they care so much about this church, and they work tirelessly, and they come out because they care about this church. <laughs> and all of the people on our council have those generic superpowers of endurance and strength and the ability to listen and to have compassion and to be justice-minded. I want you all to know that we have a team of super people with superpowers that are working on your behalf. And every now and then you might want to let them know how much you appreciate them. But what are your superpowers? I hope that you'll fill that out. If you're on the Zoom call, start talking to one another. If you're on Facebook Live, let us know what your superpowers are. And if you don't know that yet, be quiet a little bit this week and pray to God. And ask for clarity about what your superpowers are. And then ask God to help you, just like our little young carjackers, to use your superpowers for good. Because just like something powerful can be used for good, it can also be used for bad. And so it's important for us to cultivate. Jesus never sought power for power's sake, but he moved with purpose and power found him. He was just at a house visiting, and yet power showed up and helped him to free people where voices invade their body. Moses wasn't seeking power when God parted the sea, but he was doing what he was told to do, and power showed up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were not willing to compromise their commitment and their loyalty to righteousness, and they found themselves in a fire, they were not looking for power when a fourth person appeared in the fire with them. And Martin Luther King Jr. was not seeking power when he participated in the civil rights movement. You see, when you are doing what you are supposed to do and you are in the will of God, power will find you. Your superpowers will be there when we are abiding in love and working in God's purpose. I think we discover how big love is, how powerful love is. I don't know if you guys remember Angela Wimbus and Renee Moore wrote the lyrics, I've learned to respect the power of love. I've shared this story with you guys before. It gets recycled a lot. I think I'm probably on my fifth time, but way back, I'm going to share it again anyway, way back before 9-11, Actually, my mom was coming in town to visit me for Christmas, and this was back when I was in college and I didn't have any wheels, and this was when you could go all the way to the gate. You guys remember when you could go to the gate where people were getting off the airplane and you'd watch people come? I used to love that. You know, when you walk out and there's someone there to say you're important and they grab you and they hug you. 
Well, my mother was traveling on a red eye travel. And so that's a plane that gets in at 12 at night. And so I got there early because I didn't have wheels. I was traveling on CTA. And <clears throat> as the evening wore on, you know, the gates look empty. And I was out there pretty much by myself when some guy walks up selling jewelry. And in me, instinctively, I knew that what he was trying to sell me was not real. But I had a lot of time on my hand. And remember, people can use their power to do good, but they can use it to do bad. So I ended up talking him down to a price I felt was OK, and I bought the necklace. One of the things I never did share with you guys is I saw that guy again, and I gave him a mouthful of words. I did tag him to tell him about that necklace. But on that day, I had a necklace that was shiny, and it was gold, later to learn that it really really wasn't gold. And this is what I want to share with you today. Not everything that shines and has bling bling is real, but the love of Christ lasts forever. Love is everything. I've been listening to this new uh, singer, Bree, and she keeps singing, if I lost everything and I didn't have anything and you were the only thing I'd still have everything. Love is everything. And for religious people and Christians, it's everything. It's our superpower. It's our ace card. It's everything. We need more of this superpower in the world. Jesus certainly didn't leave home without it. We need the real thing in our world. And by proxy of God, it means that God needs us. Really, really needs us to show up with our superpowers. Anne Navarro, a Republican commentator on CNN, said she was watching all these new feeds on Cicely Tyson. She said and she hadn't realized that how much of a superhero this lady was to her community. She was like, yeah, I, I knew Cicely Tyson, but I didn't know Cicely Tyson. Not like that. She doesn't fly Cicely. She doesn't break walls. She's very meek. And yet the spirit of the living God used her in films and used her voice to tell a part of human history. The world needs more Cicely Tysons, but the world needs more superheroes like us that show up that show up within our arsenal this superpower of love. We know that power is not for us, but we know that power can come through us when we show up in love. When we are doing what we need to do under God's reign, You'd be surprised how powerful that act can be all by itself. I want to remind you, because oftentimes as Christians, we don't feel special. And we lose our witness. And we forget how powerful we are. Even in discerning the direction of our church, I think at some point we lost the power of what we are here. A lot of times on TV, they'll promote something different. But who we are, wanting to operate in a space of love, that's different. And that's powerful. That is powerful. Christians, we have a superpower. And we need to feel really good about that. We don't have to hide that. We don't have to walk around. We have a superpower. And that superpower is to love. Back in the day when there were eight tracks, I don't know if you guys remember now, I'm dating myself, but I was just born when eight tracks came out. My mother had her eight tracks, and she used to love to listen to Natalie Cole. And Natalie Cole sang this song I want to share with you all today because it's kind of in line with where I'm trying to go. Our love will stand as tall as the trees. Our love will spread as wide as the seas. 
Our love will shine bright in the night like the stars, cause love is soft, love is sweet, love is nice and love is gentle. Love is joy, love is pain, love is laughing in the rain. I've got love on my mind, love is always right on time. Love is you, my friend. Love is me. Love is going to set you free. Remember, Jesus was always using his power strategically. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. Jesus was using his power strategically to free people, to elevate people, to liberate people, to help people get off their blessed assurances. And that's the call on our lives too. Recognize your superpowers. Always have love in your arsenal and use power to do something good to be continued next Sunday. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this journey that you have us on. Where my ancestor says, every day is sweeter than the day before. We thank you that you call us to this journey, that you call us to each other, that you call us to participate in the reign of God on earth, that you call us to roll up our sleeves and use our superpower, not as something we hold, but as something that comes alongside us when we choose to operate in love. We thank you for the text, and we thank you for the lived experience and we thank you for your spirit that continues to abide and guide and lead us. And we thank you, Lord, that you don't give up on us. So, Lord, if, if I had everything and I lost everything and I still had you, then I would have everything. Amen.